Thank you, Jeanette. Welcome back, everyone. There's a line that's used in meditation. I think I first heard Jeanette say it. We bless everything in the sea and the land and in the air. I think just covers it all. It just pictures it in my mind. And I can relate to it. I'm sure you can too. Today's talk, was it always there? And it wasn't because that really wasn't the title of the talk, was it? And I can't even remember now what it was supposed to be. But the power of the month is imagination. Wow. And coincidentally, its position is between the eyes. Some call it the third eye. And we've seen different religious groups with that marked in between the forehead. Imagination is that faculty when we form a mental image or a new combination of ideas. It's where we see things that haven't been created. We can hear music that hasn't been written. And Leonard Jacobson, one of my early spiritual friends, wrote a book called Words from Silence. It is the creative power of the universe, and we are examples of God's creativity. But God hasn't stopped creating. God is creating through us. As I refer to, because it's my book of uh, the last few months, Deepak Chopra, we are the future of God. It can be quite scary because we're all at different stages of unfolding into that awareness. I know we're born perfect, but we gradually express more and more perfection as we learn. The infinite spirit experiences itself through us. Now we may ask why God, infinite spirit, the ocean of love and mercy and every good thing would bother to create. Well, the purpose of creation is that the creator can express through us, as I said earlier. We are the future of God. Yogananda is another one that one or two of us here um, are quite familiar with. He states, the nature of God, mind or spirit, is motionless. It's all in that dream. And the nature of creation is motion. This is it in expression. And each one of us, at our own unfolding level, is that creation. And we are using the same creative process that God uses to create this. First the mind, then the idea in the mind, and then the materialization of the idea. So first the mind, then the idea in the mind, and then the materialization of that idea. In the Bible, the Old Testament, Hebrew scriptures, whatever we call it. The first chapter of Genesis describes this creative action of universal mind in the realm of ideas, but does not yet pertain to the world. This truth is substantiated in the second chapter, where it was stated that there was not a man to till the soil. Charles Fillmore states, that this proves conclusively that the first creation described was in the realm of ideas. The last little bit of the first chapter, and then the second chapter of Genesis, is the dream manifest. God saw everything it made, and behold, it was very good. And then he said, take dominion. And didn't we just? And here we are. God hasn't stopped creating, it is creating through us. I keep on saying that, but it's so important to know. I think it's amazing what we've created. We are the recipients of all those who have imagined and brought into creation many of the things that we take for granted now. Often the younger generations think that what went before was old fashioned and make fun of some of the music, fashions and customs 
that preceded them. Even we do sometimes as we look back to think, my goodness, was I up there dancing to the Purple People Eater? Who wears short shorts? And the twist. If I did the twist now, I think I'd fall over. So the music and the fashion of the past had to happen before now, before what's happening now with the current generation. And they're taking advantage of our experience and of the technology and the information unearthed in the past. And lest we forget also some of the battles that were fought so that we have the freedom to do what we do here now in this country. I've got a week of coincidences this week. It's been a funny old thing. Um, Reverend Grace Merrick will be with us next week. Uh, we we're commiserating during the week about how she'd lost some vital papers and I'd lost my car key. And so I couldn't stand not just having one car key. I went and got another one done. And then I jokingly said to Grace, there is nothing lost in the universe. And she went, rah, rah. <laughs> anyway, I found my key. So when I speak to her this afternoon, I'll find out what she in particular is looking for that she gets. But when we started the conversation, I said, wasn't that daily word? I think it was uh, Tuesdays. Tuesday this week, the 7th of June. It's called Elder's Blessing. I bless and give thanks for the dear souls who came before me. I'm going to read a little bit more. Today I give thanks for the generations before mine, their valuable knowledge and wisdom from their vast life experience. With deep appreciation, I offer these words of blessings. I honour you for the path you have walked and the perspective that you share on your life's journey contributions to the world and lasting value beyond measure. Your sage words enrich the lives of all who listen. I give thanks for your memories and the stories you share. I just had to say that. <clears throat> Has everything that ever is going to be created, already awaiting our attention in spirit. Some of us here are fond of the poems of William, William Blake and also his artwork. And it was interesting to find out that Cahill Gabran uh, was uh, studying with Rodin and he also took note of William Blake's drawings, as you can see from the wonderful drawings in the book, Gibran. Well, the point is, Blake spoke about entering the Hall of Lois, where all events are awaiting the spotlight of our attention so that they can become alive. They are like statues, which we endow with life from movement to work in our lives. It sounds a little bit scary to me that everything is there. And that we all of a sudden, oh yeah, that's there, and that's there. And during the week, I had a dream. And um, I don't know about you, but there's some really wonderful dreams going around the planet at the moment. And uh, I was dreaming of a friend. And all of a sudden, the friend was there. It was so clear, it was a living friend, that I just had to take note and think, my goodness, this is amazing. I put it out there. Was it my imagination or what? I don't care. It was a great experience. How do we get our imagination to work? I've often experienced what is called writer's block. We seem to take forever to get started on what we want to create, whether it be a book, a poem, a painting, or a musical composition. And to get this talk done, I've been on it for about a week. I think, oh, look, I've got four days, then all of a sudden you've got three, you've got two, then you've got nothing. And here it is. I find I get some notes 
And if I don't write them down, we all know this, if you don't write them down, they're gone. And sometimes you can be in bed, and I remember Reverend Jack Bomar was here, we were talking about this, and he said, you always have a pencil and pen by the bed. Usually you're too tired to even worry about it, so you don't. You miss out on a lot of wisdom from our higher self. Ernest Hemingway was called to give a lecture on writing to a group of first year students in his hometown. He suggested to them that they were wasting their time coming to hear him. He stated, if you want to be a writer, go home and start writing. That's went down in history, but you think of all the other teachers at the university there that were actually drilling into these would be authors, some of the basic rules and regulations and English syntax. Is that the word, Diane, syntax? Good. I'm getting better as I get older with this stuff. He suggested, as I said, if you want to be a writer, write, just start writing. Another favorite writer of mine since the age of about 15 is W. Somerset Moore. Very eccentric gentleman, but he had a strict routine. He would write for three hours every morning, then have lunch and a martini at 1 p.m. overlooking the French Riviera, if you don't mind. How inspiring would that be? He claimed that whatever he wrote, whether it was suitable or not, he wrote. He just kept writing, regardless of the entertainment the night before. And he apparently loved going to the casino and playing bridge. And it was quite a wild time around that particular area in the French Riviera. And he described some of these events in his book. But every morning he was up. He used discipline. He was in charge of his mind, not the other way around. And my goodness, we need discipline now in this weather and in these times where everything, everything's a bit hard to do, it's a bit sluggish. You put things off at the last minute, but things will change. Now, there are many artificial ways of stimulating our imagination. But over time, as we have seen with many creative people, this eventually has its downside. And those rock stars, very sensitive people, but when you turn to alcohol and drugs, you know, you're on the way out. And we're still seeing it now. That's one lesson the younger generation haven't learned from the old past rockets. Humankind has used what God has supplied and used what has been given freely. If we are cold, we seek to be warm. So we discover the use of fire. And we found weapons to protect our souls from wild animals and aggressive nations. Necessity can make us look or solutions to problems real or imagined. And all the wonderful discoveries that have been made and are blessing the world today were first conceived in the imagination of someone's mind. Having been involved with music all my life and studied the history of it, and I'm amazed to see the changes in the types of instruments and the ever different styles of music composition. From primitive man who first heard the wind blowing through the hollow reeds in the swamp, came the great pipe organs of the world. Even though they may need an electronic device to create the pressure of air needed. Even so, it's a humbling beginning, was that hollow reed. When you think about it, the reed, someone must have got that reed and then got a bigger reed and thought that goes there, that one's there, 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 there. I did the same thing when, uh, before we got a piano when I was a child, about four, eight. I used to get bottles, empty bottles, and fill them with water. And someone told me that if you do that, they can produce a different tone. So I got a spoon and I got a, eight bottles and I had, there's a scale. And here I thought I was wonderful. 
And imagination when you're young can be very dim too, can't it? Because I remember thinking I could jump off our garage roof and use the umbrella as a parachute. It's a bumpy ride. Beethoven, for inspiration, went for walks in nature, as do most of us. Mozart had some great ideas come to him as he played billiards. And apparently he was a mean billiard player. And the range of the modern day piano is due to imagination. The piano in the time of Mozart had approximately 32 keys. In the time of Beethoven, approximately 40, and now the full-size piano has 88 notes. But when you think uh, that 32 keys on that, you can play the 48 preludes and fugues, and also you can do most of Mozart's sonatas. So bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. It's what we make on the opportunities we've got with the full-size piano, and people are using it now. We're getting all sorts of compositions from right across the spectrum, a range of sound. J.S. Bach wrote masterpieces for instruments that had not yet the range to play what he had written. He heard in his head what hadn't been out here in the universe, and eventually the range of tone came. Is all this a mystery? Maybe yes and no, but many have written about how it works and that we can conceive what we can conceive the mind can achieve. Wattles in his book, The Science of Getting Rich, writes, there is a thinking stuff through which all things are made and in its original state permeates, penetrates and fills the interspaces of the universe. I ran a discussion group here at Unity and I couldn't believe it when I saw the date, 2007, on a book by Catherine Ponder called The Millionaires of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, Ponder describes it as a prosperity story. After the world was created in a grand style, this is Ponder. Mankind was then formed from the dust of the earth. When you hear that term, the dust of the earth, you feel as if you've been, you know, you, you need a good wash or something. But no, Ponder calls this stuff radiant substance and gold dust. And mankind was given dominion over all they saw through the actions of their mind. Now, it's not only for us, it's for others, as alluded to in meditation, and we have an intention circle group, this power. When two or more are gathered, it is so powerful. And we have been blessed to see these demonstrations. The power is amplified and demonstrated. Now, before I finish, as I said to Ruth, I didn't know whether I was going to do this or not, but I can't resist. I did a talk oh, years ago called Life on the Ocean Wave. So I'd like to go through a couple of slides and show you the power of imagination. I hope you can see them at home. There we are. There was a slide before of um, an Indian on a log, you know, going down the river. But there we go. We started off. Some have decided they didn't want to swim across. They wanted to remain dry, so they invented a boat. I don't know whether this gets any better. Now, what's the next one? Right, we got tired of using oars, so we created an engine. Aren't we clever? We're building on the previous generation. <clears throat> too much, too soon, we got ahead of ourselves. We tried again but not quite, and not so quick, right? <laughs> I have some words of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> so there we are. There we, we thought we'd had it right. We built bigger and they went through the old charts, but no, they still hadn't got it right. Thank you. Okay, look what we've done. We can now move all this stuff. 
what I see in that is sometimes us as humans and look at the baggage we carry. Isn't that amazing? That is so symbolic. Thank you, Mark. Now, we're really clever now because, you know, we've decided we, if we're going to do a journey and we own the ship, don't just own one, own about 20 and make them bigger and better and get more on, onto the uh, craft and see what happens. That's, you know, if you think you're going to get away from it, would you go there? It would be just like living in a hotel in the city. Thank you. But on our journey, we find weird things happening. Where did that come from? Are we being observed? What's going on there? Okay. Thank you. So to make sure we're okay against these really weird, unidentified objects, we decided to build this. Surely that could tackle everything. That would get us out of trouble. It doesn't. Thank you. Mark. Then after a board meeting, a group of directors, one of the senior directors had a dream. He thought he'd combine flying and sailing. And this dream came to him and he saw that. And that was the outcome. There it is. Goodness knows what that can do, uh, but that's the result of imagination. And didn't it come from that first little rowboat? And when we're together, two or more minds think and create, and we come up with all sorts of wonderful things. Thanks, Ron. So to conclude, we are all a microcosm in the macrocosm, and what affects on all affects us all. One goes, we all go. So am I willing to accept the responsibility that goes with my use of creative imagination? There's been some incredible inventions that some people have regretted. When television was first introduced, one of the founders was horrified that they were going to use this wonderful medium for advertising. He was horrified. We combine the power of imagination in line with all the other 12 powers, and especially love, wisdom, will, order, and life. And on a basic level, we can use our power to create constructive and inspiring creations as we meditate and tune in to what spirit reveals to us. Where there has been seemingly lacking finances, health and other material burdens, we now use our power of imagination to see and affirm all the good we need demonstrated in our life. Now, not only for myself or yourself, but for all our fellow travellers on the path of this journey we call life together. Thank you.